Well, guys, thank you all for joining. We have an incredible session lined up today. We have Shai Alon, a serial entrepreneur, has been doing chat before it was in or at the previous wave back in 2016. Two-time serial entrepreneur, recently acquired by Orca Security a couple of years ago. And ever since, he's been director of AI innovation at Orca Security, which are at the forefront of everything generative AI. And he will take us today through how to build a AI search using generative AI technologies. Shai, the floor is yours. Thanks, Jonathan. Hi, everyone. I can't see your faces, by the way, but I, I assume you're with me and feel free to send anything in the chat. So what we're going to be discussing today is building a new generation of AI search, right? And, and this is something that really is, has been impossible to create just a couple of years ago. But today it's possible and even quite simple if, if you understand the mechanics. And by the end of this talk, you will know exactly how to construct such an amazing experience and to end. So we'll discuss the power of AI search, what problems it solves, the architecture that we used at Orca Security to, to solve just that, which technologies we used, a hands-on demo on an open source example. So this is something you can later take and play around with and uh, explore. And uh, yeah, and, and wrap things up with a few disclaimers. So a bit about me, I'm, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, Director of AI Innovation at Orca, twice an entrepreneur with Chatleap that powers some of the biggest chatbots in the world to this day. I was the CTO of the company and the CEO of RapidTech, a web and API security company that was acquired by Orca. I love JavaScript. So by the way, the open source demo is also in JavaScript, not Python. Don't want to disappoint. Elasticsearch, been working with it for around a decade now and graphs in all forms, shapes and sizes. This is my LinkedIn. Feel free to connect and ask me anything. So the power of AI search and what, what are we even trying to solve here? So imagine you're in the market for a new Mac laptop and you, you have, you know, a certain uh, CPU in mind, it must have at least 16 gigs of RAM and you have a budget. Now, Amazon, the world's uh, arguably best retailer, best online retailer, uh, would have you write Mac laptop at the top. And then you need to find all these filters that, that correspond to, to the exact same features that you're looking for. And this task is sometimes quite excruciating, to be honest. It's, it's not fun. It takes a long time. And if I were to just write this text in the search bar, I would get an answer. So I, I wouldn't get uh, the actual products that I'm looking to see. I would get a uh, max with uh, less RAM. I would get something that is over the budget and so forth. Another example, let's uh, do travel. So I'm looking for a well-rated hotel in London. You know, I have a certain itinerary in mind and, and features like Wi-Fi and parking and spa and uh, a budget again. So booking my favorite travel website uh, would have you find in all these picks and, and drop downs and selectors the, the exact phrasing that you're looking for. And it's sometimes quite hard. So yesterday I was looking for a room with a, a crib, a bassinet for a baby, and it took me 15 minutes to find the one that corresponds to it. So this kind of, of experience is, is not ideal, but we're all used to it. I mean, that's, that's what you get. And at Orca Security, we also have quite an advanced uh, search engine, um, even before AI uh, came on the scene. So... You can search for which internet exposed VMs have PHI. Uh, and here you can see we're actually using a custom jargon uh, that is unique to cybersecurity. So VM actually means uh, virtual machine. PHI is uh, short for personal health information, something uh, that cybersecurity practitioners are worried about leaking. Um, so being able to, to search in that way 
is something very substantial and important. And you can see we have similar dropdown kind of, kind of features. I select the virtual machine and then uh, is exposed and I need to read the documentation of each of these fields. Uh, mind you, there are hundreds of these uh, models, we call them, with thousands and thousands of fields. So this is uh, quite complex uh, to the average user. And you can see that sometimes you, you have these vague uh, names. So PHI, personal health information, is actually embedded under PII. So PII types, and it has personal health information. And, and this is, by the way, a loved feature. Uh, our customers love using it. It's very powerful and provides them with the exact uh, capabilities they're looking to, to have in order to be productive. However, it's still hard, much like the Amazon example or the booking example. And what we thought uh, in the CTO team at Orca is maybe we can combine the AI reasoning with expert curation to, to achieve really substantial results that are meaningful and hit the target of what the user is looking to get while still being fast and, and effective. So the challenges with doing exactly that, right? And building a feature that you can just ask which internet exposed VMs have PHI and it would find uh, the actual result. So this understands subjects. So you, as I mentioned, we have hundreds of these subjects, attributes, links, and so forth are in the thousands. And understanding abbreviations and the custom taxonomy used in, in this certain domain of cybersecurity and uh, logical reasoning, right? So these uh, filters tend to have and, or, and, or uh, not. Negation is actually really hard to accomplish. So if, if you think of negation, it could be VMs without PHI. Uh, and negation is something that uh, is hard to get. Partial matches, again, really hard. And reading the actual data distribution per the user. So if you recall, we had a dropdown with the distribution, we need to propagate that effectively. Oh, and of course, people are from all over the world, and some people want to search in their native language, be it Hebrew, Spanish, Japanese, or anything else. Uh, so they actually write things like instead of saying it in English. Uh, so these are the challenges of what we had to face to build an AI search engine that actually works. So, and it works, by the way, in, in Hebrew too. So really, really fun. Uh, a bit about the architecture that makes all this uh, magic happen. So when a user searches something like VMs with we, what we do is go through an intermediate format uh, that we try to convert it into a JSON that can be iterated uh, by code. Okay, so we have hundreds of curated examples that we made of how you make this conversion happen. And we do a RAG process, retrieval augmented generation, uh, that anytime we get a query, we pull three to six very similar queries that we have in our curated data set, provide them to an LLM with, with context. So this is your task is to create this structured format. It has some form of a spec. And here are our examples of how you make this conversion happen. And in this case, the expected output is VM uh, that should contain uh, personal health information, keywords, PHI, health, PIF. So the next step would be to run yet another RAG process to resolve what we call the subject, right? So there are very similar things. Uh, you can see here the subject result to virtual machine, but we actually had virtual instances as another candidate and VM image, which actually has the name VM in it, uh, but it's something else. A VM is not a VM image. Uh, it's two different things. So that's where you really need that uh, precision and ability to do very effective recall. 
you can see this is similar to the process that humans go through when they're in the UI. So they search for something like that's the one I'm looking for, virtual machine. And once we have that, we can go ahead and iterate these filters. So we have yet another mapping of the graph. Our entire model set is a graph, hundreds of models, attributes between them, links between them. And then we find candidate attribute. And this is where this explanation and the keywords come into place. So we go to the, to the schema graph and we say, give me attributes that match these using a hybrid search that I'll get into later. And we scope it by the models. So it's only attributes that exist on the model virtual machine that we, we decided is, is ours. And again, this is similar to the process that the human might go through. They search PII and they see this PII types and they read the description and say, that's the one for me. And the final step here is to go through an LLM yet again and, and do what we call the refiner. And, and the refiner creates queries in our actual DSL, domain-specific language that we can later use in our UI. Um, this is also a step that we actually query. We use the user's um, credentials, if you will, to, to query and, and actually get data, much like the user in the UI. Here has a distribution of the actual occurrences in their, in their environment. And, and again, the AI does the same thing. So it does it for the user. And the refiner creates the structured queries that are in the exact syntax that our UI uh, knows how to work with. So that is the flow. By the way, we you can see here has PII was actually eliminated. So the refiner said, this is a bit relevant, but it's not relevant enough because uh, while a PHI, personal health information, is one form of PII, um, if I, I mark this as has PII, yes, then we'd actually get too many results here. And that's not what we're uh, looking for. So uh, the intrinsics of, of this process uh, require a lot of precision uh, around what is relevant. Uh, condensing this whole process, user gives us a natural language in any language search and the AI engineered search creates in our own Orca DSL query that the UI can work with, the APIs can work with, and we can bring that forward. So that is the process here. And let's get into the technologies that we're using to, to solve this problem. So you, you saw that we have RAG here in multiple places. So this is one, two, three, and four. This is uh, another uh, form of RAG from the actual data. While these are on the schema and our examples. So the schema and examples we're using Elasticsearch for, uh, and we're doing a hybrid search. What is a hybrid search? Basically, it's a good old keyword search, which my personal belief is still very effective, even in the world of uh, vector embeddings today. Still, when you need to match something like log4j or Node.js version 16 or PHI or S3 bucket, uh, keywords tend to perform very, very well. Uh, and they can, you can provide these custom boostings. So say, oh, okay, when I search, the name has this weight and the description has this weight. Um, and we combine that with embeddings. Uh, we're still using a text embedding ADA2. Uh, I know there is a, a newer model that's supposed to be better. Uh, did not try it just yet. And something important here is modeling and filtering is essential. So we modeled an actual graph and we want to filter only attributes that are scoped to a certain model. Uh, and Elasticsearch is a very effective technology at making that happen, actually reducing the scope to exactly what uh, you want. 
Um, so that's that's regarding our RAG. Uh, LLMs, how do we tame uh, these beasts? So a few tips. One is that they are very weak at following specs for creating JSON. So if you tell it, hey, this is the process, you do this, you do this, you do this, it's great, it's a start, but you must have examples, okay? And, and make them curated and effective and comprehensive so that they cover a lot of space. Um, without that, uh, you you can't really get this process to work. Uh, good LLMs, the more powerful models, can actually um, generalize pretty well and combine these examples. So I had one example regarding uh, PHI. I had another regarding um, SSH keys, and the user asks something combining them, and the LLM is able to do that in an effective way. Um, the less information you send to LLLM, from our experience, it's uh, the better. So what does that mean? Let's say you have uh, 100 curated examples. Theoretically, if they all get into the context window, you can send them all. But that will still reduce the, the effectiveness of the process and the accuracy. And you're much better off finding the ones that are actually relevant and sending only these to, to the LLM. So this is a, a very crucial thing to, to realize um, the ability to select the, the exact information that is relevant and put only that into an LLM prompt is substantially effective uh, compared to anything else for improving uh, the performance of the LLM. Um, and when I say performance, it means the accuracy of the results that we get, the latency that we get, uh, and the cost. And if you have one takeaway from this entire session, it's that the LLM performance is always improved with good RAG. And, and you, if you have effective RAG processes, you can narrow down what is being sent to the LLM, improve the accuracy, improve the latency, and improve the cost. All right, so let's talk specific models um, and, and let's see which one uh, fits you. GPT-4 not turbo, by the way, we're using it on uh, Azure. It's very accurate. Its main problems are the latency and uh, the cost. So these are not great. GPT-4 turbo uh, is kind of a balanced model. You get better accuracy, better late, sorry, reduced slightly reduced accuracy, but with better latency and cost. GPT 3.5 has great latency and cost, but it's not accurate. And especially for our use case, that's exact. We, we couldn't get it to provide actually effective results. GPT 3.5 fine-tuned. Uh, this is actually a process that if you do it correctly, you will get the same matching level of accuracy that you get with the larger models with great latency and cost. The problem with that is that fine tuning is, is a hard process to do. You have to maintain it. You, you have to recreate models when you get more examples and it it's, adds a lot of overhead to your process. A new up and comer that is very promising is Google Gemini Pro 1. So there you get the same cost and latency structure as you get with a GPT 3.5, uh, but it's much better in terms of accuracy. So I, I would compare it even to GPT 4 uh, Turbo. Uh, so this is a uh, good value for money. And for, for something like I'll show in the open source example, it definitely works. So you may not need uh, perfect accuracy. I'm very much looking forward to, to trying uh, Gemini Ultra or Pro uh, 1.5 sometime soon. Maybe we'll get all greens without the uh, overhead of fine tuning. Also, Gamma Mixtral fine tuned. These, these kind of architectures could work, but I have not tried them just yet for, this, for our specific use case. All right, so now the fun part open source example. And as I mentioned before, 
booking kind of an excruciating process to go through and find the exact filters that you're looking for. And what if we could reimagine this product that you just search? You, so you, you write what you're looking for and the AI will find it for you and, and put in all these filters. Uh, quick disclaimer, I am not affiliated with booking.com uh, in any way, neither is Orca Security. Uh, this is for demonstration pro uh, purposes only. Uh, even this genius level three is my wife's doing and, and not me. Um, but but let's get to, let's get to it and and see the the demo. Um, so what I have set up for you here is is a repository, uh, as I mentioned, JavaScript, Node.js, uh, and this provides us with an API uh, that is able to search basically anything. So let's let's try it. I'm looking for five days in in Barcelona starting July 2nd, let's do 2025. I want to book a year in advance and it goes to the server. You can see the server went ahead and created this intermediate format again. So the language is English, the location is Barcelona. These are the dates because I asked for five days or five nights. And I didn't mention any guests, so it, it just assumes nothing and it creates a link. So I can actually open this link and, and see it in booking. Second. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and that's, that's the process. That was a very simple search. Let's try a bit of a harder one. So this is in French. I don't remember what exactly I wrote here, but something about infants and adults and a spa and a budget. I'm not a big of a French speaker. And you can see again, it makes a request. We're using GPT-4 Turbo here. And the language is French, location is Paris, dates, nights, facilities, spa, currency, and meals. We're looking for all-inclusive. Okay, and let's click that. And you can see here, it actually finds the, the correct filter that we wanted, although it's in, in French and it's set to euros with, with the French uh, language. So that is uh, the product. Let's actually review a bit how it works, how, what the architecture of this uh, project is. So you can see we're using Fastify for the server. Uh, note for assist because uh, we we add cash uh, to every LLM request. Uh, what does that mean? Um, you can see that if I search again here, this same search, uh, it will resolve instantly. And and the reason is that uh, we don't want to go to the LLM multiple times uh, for the same information. So here we get it from a local cache here uh, using note for assist. OpenAI and a terminal link just makes these nice links from the terminal instead of having a URL. If we go to the index, this is the server. And what the server ultimately does is it asks to, to process this uh, user query. And to do that, we need to convert it into structured filters. And what does that mean? It's a very simple request to OpenAI GPT-4 Turbo creating a, a JSON object. And let's look at these specs here that we created. Okay, so the system prompt here, you translate human search queries into structured filters for booking. And as I mentioned, specs don't work really well. What does work well is examples. So example here is someone looking for accommodations with, you can see 600 quid in, in British English. And this is the output that's expected. Uh, the LLM is quite flexible in the sense that we can tell it, hey, just adding here comments, realize the language and the LLM adheres to, to these requirements. Location could be a city, a region, neighborhood, check-in date, check-out date, nights, 
I guess. And, and this is just a structure that I made up. So uh, you can basically do anything you want here. And the LLM is effective enough to, to bring that into life. Facility. So facilities here, washing machine, hot tub, crib. And here I give the model explicit instructions to, to only add what the user is asking for. What do I mean? Sometimes if I say an infant, but I don't explicitly ask for a crib, will we add a crib? That That is part of the challenge with making these things work at scale and in edge cases. Um, let's continue. So price per night, rooms, bedrooms, brands, so forth, uh, meals, and all kinds of notes. So if the user does not mention, do not include, if the question is not in English, translated to English before processing, that's how we get this magic to work in French and in Hebrew and, and anything else. Popular facilities include, this is just a list that I took from the, the website and it helps the, the LLM actually reason better. Uh, and why is that? If, if the user didn't ask for a crib, they said bassinet, and the, then the LLM will just uh, put your bassinet. But once we have this, and we know that crib is an actual filter that is uh, recognized, the, the LLM does this matching much better. We give it the current date. And the reason that we do that is because when users say, I want a booking next week, then the LLM needs to know next week in relation to what, make it respond in JSON. And, and that's, that's the process that generates these, these JSON intermediate formats. From there, we have a, a simple process that converts it into a URL. This is nothing special. It's quite even ugly code, basically to, to comply to the way that the booking URLs look something like, like you can see here, even with this hotel facility and and all kinds of, of separators between them. And, but, but this works quite well. Another thing to note is that uh, we have redundancies. And what does that mean? If we have a free Wi-Fi as one of the features, or let's, let's actually continue with the crib. So you can see we have children's cribs, but we also have baby crib, infant crib, crib, cot, baby bed, bassinet, and carry cot. And all these translate to something called room facility 175 in the booking URLs. And having these redundancies, these synonyms, is a very effective measure because sometimes the LLM might not say, it, it might say cribs in, in plural, it might say cot. So this is adds a lot of redundancies in our ability to match what the LLM comes up with with a certain structured information without going through another step in, in the LLM. So if you recall in the ORCA example, we're actually going through the LLM twice. Here, we because booking is, is simpler, we can actually only make it go through it, through it once and it will resolve. Okay, so, so that's the process. As I mentioned, cash is crucial, especially when you're working, developing, you don't want to run a high bill and you don't want to wait the latency of going to the LLM uh, for the same payload. And that's, that's important to consider. And having tests is especially important. And let's see what that means. I have here seven, I think, tests that I created. So I need two nights in Paris, one adult, and I expect to get this. This is a very simple test. This adds a bit of complexity. So I, I want also a feature like a pool and I expect to get this. And we have things that are very vague. So in Hebrew again, actually be bought. Again, Malon Beibiza. So a lot of, of inarticulate nonsense. And, and we want the LLM to reason about that also. So let's run the test and, and see how it goes. It runs the same process for each one of these. You can see. This one worked well, this one worked well, um, and the Hebrew one worked well. So we're happy. The only one 
that fell is Barcelona. And let's see why it fell. So the tests actually tell us it's because uh, of the dates. And you can see here, let's, let's go to that uh, query that the user said, I want on the 20th of this month. And, and we have here, we explicitly, oh, sorry. Yeah, so the LLM is supposed to know what the current date is. Um, and it's supposed to, we're actually giving it in two different locations what the date is, and still it messes it up. So this is when I mentioned GPT-4 Turbo is, is that medium accuracy that you get. These are the kind of things that might, might trigger it to be less effective. Let's, for the sake of the experiment, try to run it with GPT-3.5. So again, same problem. Same everything, same test. Only difference is, is that we have GPT 3.5 here. Might take a couple of seconds to, to run. And you can see that six failed and only one passed. And I expect, yeah. So actually this, even this very simple one didn't pass. The second one somehow did pass. And all these more advanced ones did not pass. So you can see it added a certain feature that we didn't want or messed up with the pricing here or messed up with dates or and uh, really anything else that you can see here it adds zero ages for for the kids for because it didn't realize that we don't want to to add what we don't explicitly know so that's that's the challenge of using the weaker models the reasoning abilities are are not great and again booking is a very simple example because you don't have things like we have in orca like or one or the other you don't have gation so not x you don't have custom searches so a, a lot of things can go wrong when when you have an elaborate search engine all right so but you can see here for example in our benchmark let's just say 20th of march Let's see if, if it will uh, work now. And, and, and this is the process that you should be working with is tests. Because uh, if you try to, to change one thing without the other, yeah, okay. Now we get all passes. Okay, so it's, uh, it, it's a bit of a limitation of this that you can't say this month. Uh, this is where bigger, better models come in. This is where uh, you can actually make the prompt dynamic. So instead of having here uh, one example, have three and do it with rags. So so you have um, a bank of, of these, I don't know, 50 examples and, and you only pull in the, the most relevant ones, which which tends to be very effective. Let's try to, to mess this up a bit. Okay, let's mess up the model and, and see which tests break. What can we do here? facilities. So let's just do, okay. In the price per night, let's see if the, the currency is, let's re remove things with the currency. So I, I'm removing information about the currency. Let's see which of the tests will break. Maybe probably all of them, I think, but, but we'll have to see one second. And, and this is why we have cash because sometimes you make you make changes that don't change the URL, the payload to the LLM. So you don't need that waiting time. Yeah. So you can see here, we messed up. We expected to have selected currency, but we removed it from the prompt. The LLM did not uh, provide it. And now we 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 basically messed up. Okay. So, so that is the open source example. You can see in the readme that second, yep. so you can see in the readme, one limitation of this is that it, it does not support the uh, booking flexible dates. And basically it's when you have here these uh, plus one day, plus two days, and this all these components. So if anyone wants to pick this up and, uh, and support this, pull request would be highly appreciated. Same for adding Google Gemini via 
I, I would suggest doing it via Langchain. It would be very appreciated. If you want to add a RAG component to, to have multiple curated examples and getting data dynamically from booking is also a bit of a limitation of, of this small POC that basically these facilities are all hard-coded while in reality there are more. Um, these are just the most popular ones. All right, so a bit of uh, disclaimers and limitations. Um, the architecture I showed you is simplified. We actually have uh, more advanced uh, capabilities like graph linking between uh, different elements. So imagine VMs that have unencrypted SSH keys. Uh, you actually need to make, make some kind of bridge between different models. And uh, not all the queries work. So just like I showed you uh, a specific example in booking with the dates not really working, we also have times that the AI either doesn't resolve or resolves to something that is false. It's still a loved feature. I mentioned multilingual support, but you can expect 10 to 50% to reduction in the accuracy for non-English uh, queries, especially if all your prompts and everything are in English. Um, the user experience, I would say we, we still need to improve. Uh, so I'm a big proponent of search as you type. And it, it's something that we're all used to. You go into Google, uh, you type two characters and, and you already have something that may be relevant. While here as a user, you're expected to write the full thing that you're looking for. Um, intermediate results while it's thinking. So uh, some of our queries um, using GPT-4 uh, that is slow may run for even 20 seconds. So it, it would be great to have some form of intermediacy between them. Explanations about the relevancy. So why we chose what we chose. And, and a few thoughts that, that I have and, and would like to share. Um, so one, is this AI search, is what I showed you considered an agent? And my answer is no, it's not an agent. Uh, it's too scoped and too feature engineered to be, uh, to be an agent. Uh, it's more like an advanced chain or a graph or, or something like that, uh, but it's not a multi-purpose agent. It's built for a very, very specific role. Uh, and the second question is, why do we need to create this AI engineered search uh, when theoretically either AI agents like, like Multion that uh, you may have seen uh, running in the browser or various uh, co-pilots can actually do the job. So have a generic co-pilot go through the process that the human uh, is going through instead of feature engineering it. And the reason is that uh, when you build an a AI search, it's more like a tool that these agents can use. So if you are an agent, uh, an AI agent, and you have the choice of either using a curated AI search engine that is feature engineer, or having to, to dabble about uh, different filters, you would go for that up. So um, it also, as a business, gives you more visibility into what's going on, what users are looking for, so that is something to, to consider. And this is all, that's the talk. You can go and, and actually see this. It's just shy alone AI search in GitHub. Check out the repo, very simple to set up. Pull requests are very welcome and that's it. Great session, Shai. Thank you, everyone who joined us. Uh, thank you, Shai, for an incredible session. Uh, we will share the recording on YouTube. We will also share the code both on the meetup and again in the YouTube link. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We try to upload every lecture and additional content. Uh, thank you all for joining and have a great weekend.